I want to talk today about uh, setting Windows 10 environment variables. Uh, if you've used Windows 7, it's a lot like that. Uh, generally, the folks who upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10 um, find uh, the, going, the navigation a little strange, uh, and it is in some ways, but once you get used to it, it's fairly simple. Um, essentially, once you figure out how to get to this, you know, click on the start button or that, you know, uh, my PC is this PC or my computer is this PC, right? Uh, some of the lingo changed. Um, once you get to the system control panel, everything's the same, all right? So underneath the, the veneer of the new kind of look and feel of the operating system, the, uh, the mechanics of setting the environment variables are the same. So um, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to get to the system uh, control panel. Um, so the meat of this discussion comes from uh, my book C Sharp for Artists, uh, second edition, okay, available at Pulp Free Press. You don't have to get the book. Uh, I'm just saying that uh, a lot of the diagrams um, are in here uh, that kind of give you step-by-step let me get to page 26, uh, a flow on how to actually set your environment variables. So in Windows 7, this, this diagram is created for Windows 7. In Windows 7, you click on uh, Computer um, and then Properties. Okay, here down in number two, let me just click on it. We're in this part right here. And then uh, once the system, uh, if you right-click on Properties, you'll get a pop-up uh, and then you can click on advanced system settings okay so we're right here that leads you to the system properties uh, window okay so once you get up to here right i should say right here everything looks everything is the same in windows 10 right it's these two steps right here that are a little different in windows 10. so let's go back to the operating system and uh, figure out a couple different ways. Now, this is not just for C Sharp, right? What the, the reason I usually have uh, students um, that I teach set their environment variables is so that they can program, um, you know, code up small C Sharp projects using the command line, okay? So here I have a, a command window open, um, and uh, I can type CSC, which is the C Sharp compiler, and, um, and the system can find that compiler because I've set the environment variable um, to point to where the compiler is located on the hard drive, okay? You could do it for Java as well, right? If you're a Java programmer or whatever you need to set. Um, so if I type Java, I don't, uh, I don't get it. Let's go Java C here. Let's see if I got Java C. Okay, see... Um, I have Java installed. I have the JDK installed on this uh, on this image, this VM image, but the system can't find the Java compiler. Okay, so let's just go set that environment variable. First, we got to figure out where something's installed so we can actually set a variable to point to that location, right? Um, before I do that, I want to show you how to get to your environment variable settings. Okay, so. Let me just close that window. All right. Uh, one way is I've got, <clears throat> if you look at my desktop here, I've got it, I have it customized, right? I've customized my desktop for my needs. So if I click on the start menu, you'll see that it, I just, I got rid of all the fluff, right? There's no other stuff on here except for my development um, uh, tiles, right? For the command prompt. There's a, del a developer command prompt and an MS build command prompt. I have a PowerShell, right? So I can click on my PowerShell stuff. I recommend you do the same thing. Customize your, your, your Windows 10 environment for development. It makes life easier. Notepad++, one of my favorite, favorite editors. Okay, I'm going to skip that update. Um, I like Notepad++, you know, so that's on there, right? Uh, if you right click, here's my, I'm coming down here in the lower left hand corner. If you right click on the start button and, and come up to system, that's one way to get to the system control panel. Okay. And then if you click on advanced system settings, you'll find where you can set your environment variables here. You come down here to environment variables, click on this button. 
and there's your environment variables. All right, so let's cancel that. I'm going to close this. Another way to open up your system is to, uh, your system control panel, is to right click on this PC. In this case, I've got this PC uh, attached to my desktop, right? So I'm going to right click on this PC and I'm going to click properties and it brings up uh, the system control panel and then I click on advanced system settings and there I go. I've, I've got my system properties uh, window up. Uh, if you if you don't uh, if you're not if you're not familiar with these ways of accessing it right, the most straightforward way would just be to go to the control panel. I've got my control panel uh, on my desktop as well. Another way to get to the control panel is just uh, right click, go to control panel. Well, let me do that again. Right click on the start button, right? And go to control panel. Okay. I think by default, if I'm correct, this is the way that Windows 10 or Windows 7 as well arranges your um, control panel, right, by category. If you see right up here, you'll see this view by category. A lot of people don't ever change that. And some people are timid about making changes to their operating system settings. And I get that, you know, if you if you think you're going to screw something up, you certainly don't want to do anything to screw things up, right? Uh, it's kind of hard to screw, uh, well, I guess maybe it's not in some cases, but it's, it is kind of hard to screw things up just by making a change to, like, this kind of stuff. So um, I don't find this particularly helpful, although if you're in the category view setting, you click on system and security, and then you'll find system third from the top, and, and you're at the system uh, control panel okay if I go uh, back to the control panel I'm gonna go here this way I can change my category which is this is the way I prefer it either small icons or large icons and I see all the icons that I that that are part of my control panel so down here in the lower left hand corner they're arranged alphabetically there's your system so there's many different ways to get to the system control panel once you're at the system control panel, you click on advanced system settings to bring up the system properties dialog box. All right, now this is where uh, we want to click on environment variables to get the environment variables dialog box. And let's just take a, a, a quick minute to discuss what we see here. We have uh, users, user environment variables, and system environment variables. I do not recommend you make any changes to system environment variables. When you, sometimes when you install software, the operating system will automatically update uh, stuff in here based on what you have installed. Okay, so for example, let's take a look and see if we can't find path. Um, path is pretty important, right? It, uh, in fact, we're going to set uh, our path and when we add um, an, an environment variable for Java and what the path environment variable does is it, it uh, points the operating system to find executables okay now don't ever edit the path environment variable in this section down here right so in the system variable section don't touch anything don't edit anything unless you really know what the heck you're doing okay and I find it unnecessary ever to edit the system environment variables. So I'm going to go up here and edit the user environment variables. Now the difference between the two would be uh, if you just if you're just one person, you have one you have a computer. It's got Windows 10. You're the only one who ever logs into that thing, and you usually log in as admin or whatever. Then then uh, you know your user environment variables are tantamount to system environment variables because they're going to apply to you when you log in the difference is though if you had a multi-user system these system environment variables apply to everybody right so and if you had more than one user a, each individual user on that computer could have their own environment variables all right so that's the difference but if it's just a if it's just your machine and you're the only only one who logs into it, um, you know you just same thing, right? You just edit your user environment variables and and you'll be good to go. 
Okay, you don't have to worry about anybody else using it. So you can tell right here I've got .NET Home, and if I uh, edit that, we can see that the name, I like to say dot, you know, like for .NET Home, that's, this is pointing to where my framework is, and in that directory, which is the C uh, underscore window, C colon underscore uh, backslash windows, backslash Microsoft.NET, backslash framework 64, backslash version 4 or v4.0.30319. <clears throat> In that directory, there's a file called csc.exe. And that's why I've got that. Now up here in my uh, path, if I edit my path, you can see I've added .NET Home. So percent dot underscore net underscore home percent. That's how I actually use the environment variable in my path, right? So my path doesn't get real long. Um, and that uh, expands to C colon backslash windows backslash Microsoft dot net da da da, right? So hit cancel. Now, what I want to do is I want to add a, a variable for Java home. All right, Java home. Uh, so what I need to do is I need to navigate to uh, where my Java installation resides on my computer, right? So I'll go to, um, I actually have over here, you'll see my cursor. I've got a shortcut to my local disk. So I'm going to open that up. I'm going to go to program files. Uh, let's go to, I don't think it's there. I have to go back. Uh, program files x86 Java and JDK 1.07. So I'm a little outdated, but that's okay for the purposes of this lecture. Now, um, what I'm looking for is Java C, right? So there's my Java C executable file, but I'm gonna actually back up. I want Java home to be this directory. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna copy this uh, um, path. Okay, this is the path to that directory, which is my Java installation directory. So I copy that control C, right? For Windows. Now I can close it. Now what I do note is in the bin directory is where I my Java C compiler is located. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to create a new environment variable. I'm going to call it Java underscore home like that. And then I'm going to just paste the path to my Java uh, installation directory and hit OK. Now, for uh, my path, what I want is I'm going to add the bin to it, right? So I'm going to say edit the path and I'm going to just on the on the on the back end here, I'm going to say percent Java underscore home percent backslash right bin semicolon all right hit okay now once i've done that i can test hit okay hit okay and you can close this window now if you had any command line windows open right you'd want to close the command line open the command line again and then that environment variables uh the new environment variable will take effect essentially if if you have a command line window or a command uh, window open and you change your environment variable and then you go straight to that command window and you test it and it doesn't work, that's a sure sign that you need to close the window and open it back up again. Or, you know, if you close the window, open it up again. Let me type Java C here, see what happens. All right, so now it's thinking, so it works, okay? Java, uh, it found the Java compiler and because I didn't put any source file with it, it said, hey, you know, here's how you use the Java C uh, compiler, right? It automatically brought up the help. I like that about Java. It, it automatically brings up the help for you. Okay, so if, this, if that didn't work, that's a sure sign that I needed to shut down my command uh, window and open it up again. If it still didn't work, then you dorked up the path, right? And you got to go uh, unfarkle it. Okay, those are two extremely important terms to programmers, dorking things up and unfarkling them, all right? Okay, um, that's about it.
Uh, customization of your environment for programming is a personal thing. I may do a video on kind of the things I like to do um, to kind of help me when I do development. On this machine, right, for C Sharp, I've got, and uh, .NET development in general, I have the Visual Studio Community Edition 2015, which, by the way, is nothing to sneeze at. It's a really very powerful um you know, app, Visual Studio is nice, right? And if you download the Community Edition, you actually have a lot of features that aren't by default initialized, all right? And uh, I think I'll do a video on that as well to show you how you can actually unlock or activate some of those features that are, are not normally um, installed when you, when you install the Community Edition of Visual Studio, all right? All right, I used uh, the Java C or the Java compiler as an example. You know, most programmers I know are multilingual. They do all kinds of programming in all kinds of different languages. So um, anyway, that was uh, how to set environment variables in, uh, in Windows 10. Uh, and kind of um, as a parting shot, I'll say, you know, the purpose of what is an environment variable, right? An environment variable is uh, is uh, used by the operating system. Um, it's like storage that you have access to in the operating system, right? Uh, it the operating system uh, can use environment variables to store information about its environment to help it do its job, right? So, um, you know, I didn't have very many environment variables set. As far as user environment variables, as you saw when I opened up my window, uh, because I don't have a whole lot of stuff uh, configured in here, right, or installed, but uh, you can you can use them for anything. Now, how do you use an environment variable, right? Another way to test is you can say um, uh, you can just start using it, right? If I wanted to say change directory cd to the Java home, right, I can just go percent. Java underscore home percent like that and I hit return and it'll take me to that directory so that's kind of a nice thing right so if you have some shortcut things that you want to put as far as paths that you frequently use you could store them as environment variables and you can access them like that which kind of cuts down on on typing I will show you another shortcut that I find handy and it saves a lot of typing and this has nothing to do with environment variables but since I'm on the thing I'm going to clear the screen all right now if I if I navigate to a folder let's say I want to go here I'm going to the Microsoft web platform installer I don't know why I'd want to go there but let's say I needed to go to that directory and I hit um, CD space and I come here and I drag that I come up here in my title bar or my address bar. This is my path, right? I click on the folder and I drag it to my command prompt. You see how it automatically pulls in with quotes that path. So I've typed CD and I want to change to that path. I hit return. Let me make sure I'm installed. Okay, hit return. <laughs> I hit enter. There we go. And it takes me to it takes me to that um, directory. So that's a quick and dirty way to change directories when you're in your command prompt instead of, you know, typing cd c colon, right? Because if there's spaces, the reason it's quoted is there's spaces in here, program files, and it has to be a quoted string in that case, right? All right, that's it for environment variables. Um, look below, I'll give you a link to the book, C Sharp for Artists, second edition. Um, if you're a struggling uh, C-sharp programmer student, buy it. Helps. It's only available as a, a PDF download. Uh, but anyway, it'll help you out. All right. And if you don't need C-sharp, I hope this helps. Anyway, you guys have a great day. And uh, happy programming.